we're here at ETH Denver with Bob Summer Will from the Ethereum Classic Cooperative. And so your involvement with the Ethereum Classic Cooperative is rather recent, you said, right? That's right, and yeah. So how did that come to be? Well, um, so uh, over the last year or so, I've been speaking a lot about tribalism, uh, both within Ethereum and in the broader uh, blockchain ecosystem, you know, that you, you have uh, this, this, this strange situation that... Uh, Ken Barton, who is uh, one of the one of the mm-hmm. guys here in Denver, talked about of 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 that you have you know hundreds or thousands of the most sort of brainy, altruistic, well-meaning people trying to build a better world. However, you know, just just fighting against each other like you know like little kids. You know that you've uh, really the feeling that we're getting a you know a lot less progress than we could have uh, because of redundant work. Uh, Due to this, this uh, you know, tyranny of small differences. Mm-hmm. So, um, and specifically with with classic over over this last year or so, I first met um, uh, Anthony Lusardi, who works at uh, at the ETC Cooperative uh, in Toronto this this May, um, where you had uh, an, an ETC talk, at a, uh, an Ethereum conference. So that was great, and then I. You know, went on, met more of them through the year, and uh, and, I, and I spoke at the uh, the Ethereum uh, Classic Summit uh, in Korea last September. So uh, I was looking for work at the end of this year, and uh, you know, just just had the opportunity to, to join them as uh, as the executive director. So uh, I'm going to try and do the ultimate bridging of uh, of trying to build, uh, you know, bring bring these two communities back together because I really do do see uh, you know the classic community as part of a part of a broader you know broader pattern of, uh, of, uh, of aligned interests and I think there's a lot that we can be doing together okay great um, well it's great to have you here in Denver and um, thanks for coming so um, can you tell us uh, a little bit more about uh, the cooperative and, and, and so what the objectives are sort of moving forward in the coming year Sure. So um, the uh, the cooperative is a it's a non-profit. Uh, it's a it's one of a, a number of different uh, you know organisations or bodies within uh, the community there. Uh, but really, the mission of, of the cooperative is uh, is is to promote uh, <coughs> promote the ecosystem, help to spot places where we're, we're missing things in the infrastructure or awareness or, or messaging and uh, 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 and really to be to be out and representing a friendly face um, and and really I you know I'm very keen to see um, you know uh, classic developers uh, you know come along to to, uh, to hackathons like this and, uh, and and build things on classic mm-hmm. great so can you Describe to maybe the less technical listeners uh, what what is the main difference of, of classic and and um, and how did that split occur and 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 so what are the current day Ethereum classic developers focused on as opposed to the Ethereum developers? Yeah, so I mean the uh, the, the split between Ethereum and Ethereum classic uh, came about as a result of the uh, you know the reaction to to the DAO, uh-huh. where really you'd got this. Um, I guess sort of you know irreconcilable philosophical you know difference as to um, how how progress should happen. You know that um, a, a hard fork uh, was 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 proposed, which was basically undoing you know the damage of the uh, of the DAO hack um, and. You know, basically, two two forms of the software were were, were offered up. You know, run or run or not run. Uh, you know, all, all blockchains have essentially got sort of anarchistic governance of well, you and users are, are choosing what software to run. Um, so the majority of uh, of the Ethereum ecosystem chose to uh, to follow the hard fork, uh, where the the Ethereum classic, uh, classic community basically felt that there was a, you know, a moral hazard that there was this a, sort of bailout equivalence, um, and and really that that was you know the the opposite of, of of their motivations for being involved in the blockchain space, you know, really a feeling that uh, 
you know, if mistakes are made, well, they're made, and mm-hmm. you you should suffer the damage. Um, otherwise, you know, you're really in a position where you've you, you're in a a, a mob, um, you know, a, a mob democracy kind of situation. And I mean, I guess some of these themes you you, you see coming up in in um, in on-chain governance systems like like Polkadot it, is saying, well. You know, should governance be off-chain and, and, and human and loose, or do you want to push that governance itself down, you know, on, onto the chain? But then again, you know, is, is that is that baking things in too tightly, where you can get, you know, cabals of of of, uh, of control? So, I mean, I'd, I'd I'd say that, you know, you've really just got a lot of that variance that you have across different projects is really just indicative of the, the variance of human beings you know that the, the um, though people might like to say well this thing is is a self-evident universal truth and you know how could you possibly disagree with it um, that's true for vanishingly small number of things you know and 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 really you've what you've got there is 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 is, is you know a, a sort of a religious kind of belief yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, to my mind, there's there's real value in the sort of the conservatism that that, that you see on, on the classic side, um, and on on the mainstream Ethereum side, it's it's more kind of move move fast and break things. And I, I think there's value in both of those sides, mm-hmm. and and I'd like people to talk more, mm-hmm. and. Um, and, and really see see where where there's commonality and we can we can do things together. Um, and there's also I think been a narrative that you know there is no, there's no development on on classic. There's nothing happening. You know that it's purely uh, a, a protest movement. And and I mean that that isn't true. You know there are multiple development teams working on clients um, teams. Uh, you know building DApps on top. Yes, it's smaller. It's a lot smaller, uh, but it's not zero. Um, and I'd say that um, that you know Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, you know, they're, they're some of the closer aligned projects that you have. You know, that there's a lot more alignment between those than say maybe with EOS or mm-hmm. Tron or, yeah. uh, or or so on. So um, okay, so um, when, have you seen uh, any cross collaboration uh, s- since the DAO hack? Like um, if. Ethereum comes out with new features. Um, um, are, are the Ethereum Classic people likely to adopt that or consider what, what is happening in that space and try to maintain their fork in a similar way? Or? Yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, I mean, I guess the big wild card is what happens with that 2.0, which you could effectively see as sort of a, you know, a different project again. You know, it's quite quite different. So, seeing well, you know, in the same way as as your your F1 chain and your F2, you know, can does EGC fit in there? And uh, I mean, I guess another thing I'd say is, from my point of view, I mean, I'm I'm a professional software engineer. That's been my background, and and people often conflate the technology with the specific chain instance. And to my mind, Ethereum is is the technology or technologies. Because I mean, even beyond, you know, there's lots and lots of stuff happening in Ethereum, which isn't mainnet. You know, it's it's side net. Uh, sorry, uh, you know, side side chain efforts, plasma, um, you know, layer two of all kinds, wallets, DApps. You know, it's it's a lot of a richer thing. And I mean, I think that you know, we're still so so early in the whole process. You know, there's years and years of of uh, of maturity. Uh, of user experience and developer experience to build up and I, I think you know it's like way too early to say well you know this is the winner this is the answer you know I mean I think the likelihood is that you know the really impactful things are probably going to be built on tech that doesn't even exist yet you know we've got we've got layers and layers to go so um, you know I think having this sort of zero sum thinking of saying well you know the very first am- you know thing is well what's your stack you know what pick your side is just a very uh, counterproductive way uh, of thinking. Um, I mean, I, um, I I worked on the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance when I was at Consensus. Um, you know, helping to really work towards uh, standards for saying, well, what what does an enterprise-grade Ethereum client look like? Uh, and I mean, you know, much of 
many of those deployments are going to be private or consortium. Mm -hmm. And again, a lot of people go, well, why are you working with, working with the banks? You know, mm -hmm. so you're, you're selling us out or what, you know, how is this good for Ethereum? Mm -hmm. And it's, and I think again, you know, that's conflation of coins with technology. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, you know, I guess if, if you're hoddling, that's that's your mindset, right? You, you just want the, the, the value to go up. But, uh, I mean, my motivation, I think a lot of the motivation of, of people in this space is is really like, you know, let's make a better world. Um, you know, let's get more um, more sovereignty, more uh, more freedom, more independence, and, and breaking down, you know, the ability of bad actors to, to trap us into these systems. Yeah, and, and not stifle mass adoption, right? Because um, yeah. I think um, the consortium networks, that they help, in a sense, um, to... Um, bridge the gap and, and, and sort of uh, provide technology that is more suitable for different use cases and which will eventually lead to mass adoption. Right? Well, that's it. And I mean, I, the reality is that uh, that no, um, you know, public permissionless um, mainnet of any technology is at any kind of scale to mm -hmm. do, you know, anything substantial at the moment. You know, we, we're, we're, we're not there on the scalability. Even if you wanted to, you can't. Um, and uh, you know this is why you, you you do see so many of these 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 efforts uh, you know around the main chains mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. So um, you know the more the merrier. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I have a funny question for you. Uh, wh where were you on the day of the DAO hack? <laughs> where was I? Um, well, I was I was I was in Vancouver. I was at home, I think. Um, and um, yeah, I'm trying to remember. I mean, yeah, it was a bit, you know, a bit shocking. Um, I mean, I had I had my doubts about the DAO anyway. Not really so much in terms of hacking, but just in terms of, well, is this thing going to work? You know, it did seem a bit, um, a bit high risk, shall we say? Um, I mean, um, you know, looking back, the tooling that we had at that point was so, you know, uh, less mature than now. You know, no, no real knowledge of best practices or anything. You know, I, it was it was a bit of a crazy moonshot. Um, you know, lots of systemic risk there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I thought it was more likely to just fail as a venture uh -huh. as opposed to being hacked. But um, okay, yeah, yeah. Inter interesting to hear. Yeah. So, if you had the opportunity to bring your team. Um, and have a meeting with the Ethereum Foundation, what would be the, the topics that you'd like to put on the table to, to have a, a cross a discussion with classic Ethereum folks and, and, the, and the Ethereum main? Well, I think, I think there's a whole bunch of things that can happen. Um, you know, the, uh, the Foundation have, have uh, and especially Virgil Griffith, have already been, um, you know, been very uh, helpful and supportive in terms of fostering that collaboration at conferences and, and so on over the last few months. Uh, there was also a donation that they made of some ETC uh, to the cooperative. Um, there's there've been a variety of, of, of efforts at doing a bridge, uh, you know, an ETC uh, to ETH bridge. I think that's got, got great value, you know, sort of tokenization of, of things both ways around. Um, if you if you look at lots of interop projects, um, you know bridging between two EVMs is is obviously an awful lot easier than than bridging to any of the other technologies. So um, you know I think I think that kind of area makes sense. Um, I think there's things that can be done on the development of the EVM itself. You know that you you've got this. So much effort has been put into um, F2.0 planning, but the fact is that the you know EVM uh, F1.0 you know that isn't going away. It's going to be around for years and years, um, and I you know you've got uh, you've got very similar kind of setups there between ETC and uh, and ETH 1.0. So I think there's the, the, there's an effort sort of being tagged all the EVM cores that Boris Mann of the Ethereum Magicians has been 
uh, talking about, which is really that, I mean, beyond even um, uh, ETH and ETC, you've you've got other sort of friends of Ethereum project that are, you know, EVM-like, maybe just at a solidity level, or maybe that they are just using the EVM. Um, but very little co collaboration and cooperation between those. So I, I, again, I think that's somewhere there's there's plenty of space for for, for shared work, um, um, like formal verification and, and uh, efforts towards specification as well. I think are very important um, for Ethereum as a whole, and and that's spanning into enterprise Ethereum. You know that the, the um, Public Ethereum itself is under spec, um, you know, beyond the, the the live compatibility you have. Lots of areas like like JSON RPCs are, you know, loosely loosely defined. Um, you know, lots of people don't really enjoy the yellow paper, find it inaccessible. Um, so I, I think you know, there's lots of collaboration that can happen there. Um, you know, things like um, uh, ProgPow or other, uh, other 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 sorts of common changes. I think you can have. I mean, I think ultimately, um, I'd like to see um, clients, you know, able able to run both. You know, it, you've you've seen with with Parity, you know, Parity has maintained classic and Ethereum support from the time of. Of the DAO, you know, and whatever Tendermint, other POA, uh, and then again on the enterprise side, you know, lots of lots of those other pieces coming in. So I think I think really there's there's little reason why you shouldn't have Ethereum clients that you know that can run all of these things, and then they're essentially deployment choices. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So uh, we've seen some division, but hopefully we'll grow back together in, in, in the future and cross collaborate. So. Um, uh, it, it's great to hear your perspectives, and thanks for coming to Denver. No worries. Okay, thank you. Thanks, thanks for coming. Cheers.